my buddy. You're the man of the house while I'm gone. You take care of your mother. Okay, Daddy, be careful. Oh, and Mrs. Poet. I'm a bit busy, babe. Don't say you love me. Okay. I already know. No, he's in the garage doing dry fire. He gets really into it. All right, hey folks, welcome to the channel. And if you like that video intro, it probably means you've got a bad sense of humor like this guy and uh, you found a home. Go ahead and subscribe and share, like, comment, stay a while, and it helped me out a lot. We're talking dry fire today, and dry fire is not a really popular conversation, and it's not popular to do. It's not as gratifying as going out and slaying targets and stacking bodies and making explosions. That's fun, but the anticlimactic little, that's not fun, uh, dry fire stuff, I get it. But guys, it's so important. I cannot tell you what it would do for your shooting capability if you guys made a normal routine of dry fire. Now the problem is, is one more thing of, ah, oh, got to be disciplined about reading and working out and now dry fire and now work and then family time and I get the discipline thing. So really kind of the secret is, is to make it really easy and kind of make it fun. And that's what I've done in my own personal dry fire routines. Ahmed, Bob, you're about to die. Ahmed, Bob, don't make me shoot you in the face! I have three kind of th categories for my dry fire. One is right when I get dressed in the morning, I've got a little bit of a routine that's really easy and you may want to adopt. Uh, number two is when I'm feeling a little bit more motivated a couple times a week, I'm in my dry fire room, i.e. my garage. Uh, doing some stuff. And then three, I do dry fire on the range before, during, or after I go live fire. Uh, I, the third category I've already dealt with in other videos. I'll go ahead and provide a link on something for you guys to check out. But suffice it to say, I may go straight out to the range and not shoot for 10 minutes where I'm just practicing draw and I'll practice at varying speeds. Okay, 10% super slow motion. Pick it up 20, 30, 40, 50%, 80%. I usually hang around the 80% mark uh, for most of my dry fire. That's kind of the magic hour where I'm going to be able to guarantee my hits. It'll still be very, very accurate. But uh, anyway, that's how I roll. Now, sometimes when I go out to the range as well, I kind of uh, just take a drill and I want to hit it cold, just see where I'm at. And then after I run the drill, I'll back up and do my dry fire, dry fire, dry fire. So anyway, that's a good practice and you need to be able to do it. Now, let's talk about the other two categories that I uh, said. One is when I'm getting dressed in the morning and two is when I'm doing really a, a bigger deal structured dry fire session here in my dry fire room garage. First off, you got to make sure that you're all cleared out. So what I don't like is you drawing out guns and pointing them at walls where they could potentially go through a wall if you had a negligent discharge, travel through a few rooms and kill your kid or a neighbor or something. That's not acceptable. So you have a few options. One is you have kind of like a dry fire gun. Here's a blue gun that I have, and I've got holsters, identical holsters. This is identical to my Glock 19 that I carry, and it allows me to be able to get dry fire repetitions without pointing a live gun somewhere in my house. The other option is to uh, go ahead and just make sure you're, you've got a cleared out gun. This is where you're going through your clearing procedures. And even after you've made sure everything's nice and clear, you're going to ensure that you are pointing in a safe direction so that even if you pulled the trigger uh, and a round went off, it's not going to injure anyone. So there's the safety stuff. Stick to the universal firearm safety rules and you're going to be good to go. All right, so when I get dressed in the morning, oftentimes I'll go ahead and take my garment and I'll stretch it out here at the base so it's nice and loose, which helps me conceal my gun a little bit better. And it also allows me to really quickly grab something so I can get up on target without anything getting hung up on my gun. And again, I've all cleared out and I'm good to go uh, down here. Then I'll just pick a spot on the wall. Say I'm like, okay, electrical outlet, light switch, picture frame. I'm like, all right, here we go. And then I just go through it, top, top, right there. Again. And I'll practice those transitions. Then I may do some one-handed stuff as well. 
So I'm practicing defeating my garment each and every time, whatever your method is, and don't sharpshoot me, you don't know what context I'm imagining here. But I'm just kind of going through that and I'm really just making sure that I'm able to defeat garment and everything's gelling well and uh, I'm good to go out. Now I'll probably do that for 30 seconds to a minute. There's my dry fire. <laughs> All right, let's talk more involved dry fire training. So now I'm in my garage. I'm ready to uh, assassinate Bob and Ahmed right here. And they're my training partners. And I shoot them in the face a lot because I like to party. If you guys want good training tools like this blue gun, or if you want something like an airsoft gun right here, I'll provide links below in the description with all the little things that you need. I like this of you know, there's UTM and there's simunitions and that stuff. That's really expensive to get into. It costs a lot per round as well. So this is a really good training tool as well. I also like this particular airsoft gun because it fits my holster. Uh, so I've got a Glock 19 and this is made so it'll fit my holsters as well. So that's that's good to go. You got to wear iPro when you play with airsoft, especially as these projectiles start hitting off stuff, bouncing all around, it can hit your eye. If it hits your skin, you can suck that up, buttercup. But the eye, that's not being tough, that's being stupid, right? So what I do is I imagine different scenarios, gunfight type scenarios where I work uh, all my different quick draws, movement offline, target transitions. Doesn't do much for rapid fire because I lack the reality of, or the realistic recoil management, but it does recoil just a little bit, but not enough to actually have any training value. So there's a whole lot that's going on here that allows me to have good training. Uh, let's shoot these guys a little bit now. Oh, easy fellas, easy. Whoa, whoa, sorry guys. Hey, easy, easy. I, hey, I'm sorry. Whoa, hey, easy guys, easy. I don't wanna fight, but it's okay. What's up? Um, we are out of shape mix. Um, Whoa, hey, easy man. I'm sorry, please don't kill me. Yep, easy. Easy. We can figure this out. Yep, no sweat. All right, easy guys, we can figure this out. All right, so I got way carried away doing all that because it was fun. I'm sweating from killing Ahmed and Bob, and you should too. So uh, have fun dry firing, hit it hard, train. Uh, this allows you to get a whole bunch of repetition without driving up the training ammo cost and all those trips to and from the range. This'll get you good. So uh, anyway, train hard, train smart, guys, and I'll see you.